Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and in today's episode we will be doing a small hands on demo on the NAT gateways and NAT instances and we'll see how our private instances in the private subnet can get internet access. So if you're ready, let's begin. So NAT Gateway Service is a fully managed service from AWS that helps us enable instances in a private subnet to connect to internet and other AWS services. Yes, you heard it right. It's a service, so NAT Gateway Service and it's completely managed by AWS. So there are way less things to be worried about when you use NAT Gateway Service. So NAT Gateway actually supports 5 Gbps of bandwidth and automatically scales up to 45 Gbps and as this is a service you will be charged for the usage as well and you are charged for creating and using a NAT gateway in your account and you will be charged hourly for your usage and data processing that is you are charged for each NAT gateway hour that your NAT gateway is provisioned and available and data processing charges apply for each gigabyte processed through the NAT gateway so if you see here for AP South 1 region the charges for NAT gateway per hour is $0.056 and for per GB data processed it's also the same that is $0.056 and NAT gateways are not supported for IPv6 traffic we need to use uh, outbound only egress internet gateway for that so now let's see how we can create a NAT gateway so there are very simple steps to create your NAT gateway so the step one is you must specify the public subnet in which the NAT gateway should reside yes the NAT gateway should reside in your public subnet which means it is associated with the internet gateway so I think I gave you the clue right there and step two is basically specify an elastic IP address to associate with the NAT gateway that is the IP that will be used to create IP masquerading so that's really important and step three update the route table associated with one or more of your private subnets to point internet bound traffic to the NAT gateway so if you have more than one or one or more private subnets you can add them to the route table for them to get associated with the NAT gateway but it is advised to have one or more in each subnet and you can have more than one NAT gateway per availability zone and the quota is a maximum of five per availability zone a NAT gateway in the pending active or deleting state counts against your quota so even if they are in these three states it still counts as a plus one for your quota limit and here as well we need to consider the availability zone independent architecture and for that AWS tells us to create a NAT gateway in each availability zone and configure the routing to ensure that resources use the NAT gateway in the same availability zone else they might have a single point of failure now let's see the visualization here so here we have our availability zone which has a private subnet which has our database instances that needs our internet access so the main route table for the private subnet sends the request to the NAT gateway and the NAT sends it to the internet gateway using the elastic IP which acts as a source IP so I agree it's not a magic one touch connection but for your instances at private subnet to access the internet they have to talk to the NAT gateway which resides in the public subnet so this is the public subnet where your NAT gateway should reside and using the internet gateway here we actually connect to the internet so if your instances at private subnet want to access the internet they have to talk to the NAT gateway which resides in the public subnet using the internet gateway which in turn gets connected to the internet but all that happens with the help of the route tables as you can see so all the instances here making a public IP address request actually goes through the NAT gateway ID and then it forwards it to the internet gateway as you can see here. So I hope you got the idea here that if your instances that are in the private subnet want to have internet connection, they have to go through the NAT gateway which resides in the public subnet. So public subnet means your subnet will have access to the internet gateway through which you will be able to access the internet. So in today's episode what we are going to do is we will have our public subnet and we will be having our private subnet as well and in the last episode we already have created the internet gateway I hope you have seen that demo as well and we will launch a NAT gateway and NAT instance and we'll see how that actually affects our instances in the private subnet 
we will see how the NAT gateways and NAT instances are able to help us as because we are staying in the private subnet for us to reach the internet and to get connected to the internet. So this is the VPC and here we are going to create two subnets and those two will be one from the public subnet and the other one will be our private subnet. But as you have already seen the previous episodes, we have already created that and uh, you can check out the previous videos for to know actually how we have created the subnets. And here we have the public subnet which has a CIDR block of 10.0.32.0 slash 24 that is also having 250 IP addresses. And here as well we have the private subnet. This is also same 10.0.1.0 slash 24. So both of the subnets here I have 250 IP addresses. So I don't think this is going to matter much because I'm going to just create one or two instances. So this should be just fine. So the next thing is we have to create an instance in the private subnet. So how we can create that? We have to go to EC2 and then we have to create the instance here. So to create the instance, you need to just click on launch instances. Here you need to choose the Linux to AMI. Just choose the t2.micro because this is the free tier eligible one. Click on configure instances and here you have to choose your own new VPC that you have created. That is my VPC demo and we have to choose the private subnet. So the only point that I want to make here is you have to understand the clear difference between both of them is because the public subnet, even though you name it anything, if it is connected to the internet gateway, then it is considered to be a public subnet. If the private subnet or any subnet that does not have internet access on its own, then it is by logic a private subnet. So here as well, I can choose whether to give it a public IP address or not. For now, I can just enable it. And uh, there are no other changes that I need to make. I have selected the VPC. I have selected the subnet that I want. And then I can just click on add storage. So this should be fine. Just click on add tags, add tag, give it a name, my private zero one configure security groups here you can choose to create a new one or you can choose an existing one as well so if for the demo purpose i can just create a new one my private sg and i can give the connectivity for ssh that is the port 22 and it can be from anywhere so not a problem it does not have internet access so don't worry about it just click on review and launch launch and i think you already have this key i also have this so just click on i acknowledge that i have access to the selected private key click on launch instance that's it you should be able to get your details for the instance right now yeah so this is the instance that i have right now and here as you can see i have the public ipv address as this does not have internet connection, we won't be able to connect to this from the outside world. So just to show you the same thing once again, just copy this. Go to your terminal and go to the path where you have the key. Then do just an SSH of EC2 hyphen user at the rate the IP address hyphen I the SSH key. Yeah, this obviously won't work because there is no internet connectivity. But if suppose this instance was in the public subnet and it had an internet gateway, then obviously it would be able to connect. But what we can do now is we can launch another instance for us in the public subnet and see whether we are able to connect to that or not. So click on launch instance. Select AMI. And here I will choose my VPC but I'll choose the public subnet and I'll enable the auto assign public IP and that's it just click on add storage add tags public 01 configure security groups select an existing one yeah sure this should work for me Punch. Yeah, that's it. 
So now, this is the public instance. So now let's see whether we are able to connect the newly created public instance or not. So this is the public instance that I have and it is already running. And I can just click on this copy and I'll try to connect to this. Same procedure as such ec2 hyphen user at the rate IP address or just hit enter. Yes, we are able to connect to this. And one more interesting thing is I can connect to my private instance because the main route table tells us that all the IP addresses locally within the IP cider block that is 10.0.0.0 slash 16 should be routed through the local VPC and that is the reason why even if I try to connect to the private instance from my public instance outside I will be able to connect to this so how we are going to connect to this we need the key right so we have to copy the key here and I'll copy the key here and I'll try to connect to the private instance so here in the public instance what I can do I can go to the home folder cd slash home slash ec2 f user and here I can create a sample and here I can create the private key. So it will be ec2 hyphen key dot and then I'll just copy the content of the key that I have. I'll just copy the content of the private key that I have and I'll just press I that is the insert command and you can just control V and you can paste it colon wq that's it you have the content now you have to change the mode for the file basically we have to change the permissions to make it secure that's it ch mode so yeah we are good for now if you do a ls if an altr you should see the permissions to be secure and it should be easy to have user easy to have an user the group and the user should be same so now that we have copied the key and we have changed the permissions now we are ready to connect to the instance so what are you going to do you're going to just ec2 hyphen user at the rate copy the private ip that you have if and i the ec2 hyphen key that you have just copied yes you are able to connect to the private instance from your public instance that you have because both of them are in the same vpc and the route table actually guides it within the vpc itself there is one more thing that we had to confirm so now this is the private instance but we have to confirm that we don't have internet access otherwise it will be a big blunder because we will not get to know that whatever modifications that we made by creating the NAT gateway it actually works or not so you can just do a google ping google.com and it will not work so obviously it does not work because we don't have internet connectivity so how we can resolve this obviously we'll add a NAT gateway to this you see here NAT gateway click on NAT gateways and create a NAT gateway so in this form you have to fill out the detail like my NAT gateway demo so I'll give it a name and the subnet you have to choose is public because the NAT gateways should reside in the public subnet and you have to allocate an elastic IP for that and then you just create the NAT gateway so it will take some time for the state to change from pending to available you can just wait for a few minutes or a few seconds to uh, get this done yeah so now it is available and you have the elastic IP address as well so what is the next step that we wanted to do we had to associate or we had to create a new route table so this is the route table that we have for the internet gateway so if you click on this one you can see the route is being propagated to the internet gateway and to connect to the internet from the private ips or the private instances that we have we need to create a route table so i'll create one so my route private NAT let's suppose we'll keep it like this and you can just define the vpc that you have and just click on create and what is the next thing that we wanted to have we have to associate the nat gateway that we have recently created isn't it 0.0.0.0 slash 0 to the nat gateway so once you click on nat 
you will see the NAT ID already propagated here. If you have multiple, then choose the one that you have as per your requirement. Just click on this and save the route. And you must make sure that the status of the association should be in active state. If suppose it is in a black hole state, then you are not going to be able to connect. So now you have to associate your subnet as well. This is the private subnet that we have. So I have to associate this with this subnet. But first, let's see even without association, does it work or not? Otherwise, it will be a big no-no uh, for us, isn't it? No. Thank God it does not connect. My theory is correct here. So we have to associate the subnet here. So click on edit and there's a private subnet. Click on this private subnet and just save. So now your private subnet has been associated to this route table. We have created the instances, the private instances. We have created the NAT gateway. We have associated that in the route table for the main route table or the custom route table that you want. You can create it. I have created a custom route table, so don't worry about it. And I have associated 0.0.0.0.0 slash 0 to NAT gateway ID. And on the public subnet, I have the custom route table, which is pointing every public IP address 0.0.0.0 slash 0 to the internet gateway. So both of this is done. So now we have the instance, we have the NAT gateway, we have the routes populated. That's it. We should be able to connect to the internet from the private instance now. Let's see. So this is the private instance. 10.0.195. I'll just show you once again. This is the one, otherwise, you might tell I cheated. 10.0.195. There you go. We are able to connect to the internet. And if suppose this instance has to be connected to the AWS services that you have, like S3 or any other service, you are now able to do that because you have the NAT gateways with you, for which you should be grateful to Amazon not to me.